Okay, so now we're going to start with chapter 8, which deals with chemical composition. And basically, in this chapter, we'll be looking at the makeup of substances and the percentages of each element present in a compound. So, first thing I need to talk about here is what is known as the mole concept. All right? So what do we mean by the mole? Well, firstly, you must recognize that when it comes to a single atom of any element, the mass of that atom is very, very small, too small to be measured on any weighing instrument. So for example, the mass of the hydrogen atom is 1.673 times 10 to the minus 24 grams. As you can see, that's a very small number. So as this says here, it's a very infinitesimal mass. All right, um, now let's review something. I think we discussed this before. The atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus of any atom of a given element, and each element has its own unique atomic number. The mass number is the integer which represents the sum of the numbers of protons and neutrons present in the nucleus of an atom. All right? The atomic mass, which is different from the mass number, is very oftentimes confused with the mass number, is basically the mass of an atom which is expressed in the atomic mass unit um, scale. Atoms are very small, so therefore that's why we need a small unit in order to conveniently express the mass of an atom or a molecule. And by definition, one atomic mass unit, one AMU, is one twelfth exactly the mass of a carbon-12 atom. One AMU, it turns out to be equal to this value you see here, which is 1.66054 times 10 to the minus 24. And it's very important for you to note, the mass of an atom is not exactly the sum of the masses of the protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now, I won't go into the reasons for this right now, but for those of you who plan to move on to general chemistry too, when we get to nuclear chemistry, you're going to see the reason why this is the case. All right? So, um, in chemistry, we require a unit for counting, which can be used to express very large numbers of atoms using simple numbers. And chemists have used, chosen a unit for counting atoms, and that unit is called the mole. I like to look at the mole as something similar to terms that we use in everyday language, such as dozen, which represents 12, or such as gross, which represents 144. So in chemistry, we use the mole to represent a particular number, which turns out to be a very large number. So one mole of anything, doesn't matter what the thing is, is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 um, of that thing, of that item. All right. In chemistry, of course, we tend to use the mole in conjunction with um, atoms, molecules, ions, etc. <clears throat> so as stated here, this number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23, is a very large number. All right? And this number also has a name attached to it. It's called Avogadro's number, named after the Italian scientist. Okay, so just to give an idea as to how large this number is, um, this statement here says, if 10,000 people started to count Avogadro's number and counted at a rate of 100 numbers per minute, each minute of the day, it would take over 1 trillion years to count the total number. So that gives you an idea as to how large that number is. So, by definition, one mole of any element contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of that particular element. All right? And the atomic mass in grams of any element contains one mole of atoms. So what this is telling you is that whatever the atomic mass of the element is, if you express that in grams, then that mass contains one mole of atoms. And there's a name given to this mass. It's called the molar mass of the element. So the molar mass and the atomic mass are numerically the same. And it's very important that you understand this. The atomic mass and the molar mass of an element are numerically the same, but the units are different. The units of atomic mass is AMU, and the units of molar mass is grams per mole. All right? So one mole of any element contains the same number of atoms, which is, of course, Avogadro's number, as there are in exactly 12 grams of the carbon-12 
isotope. So just to give you a rundown of a few examples of Avogadro's number in relation to the mole for different elements and molecules and so on. So let's say we're dealing with hydrogen atoms. One mole of hydrogen atoms will contain Avogadro's number of hydrogen atoms. One mole of hydrogen molecule will contain, again, Avogadro's number of hydrogen molecules. One mole of sodium atoms will contain Avogadro's number of sodium atoms. So you see a pattern here. Basically, when we're talking about one mole of anything, we're talking about um, the fact that in terms of the atoms or molecules involved, the number of atoms and molecules will be Avogadro's number. Same is true for iron. Same is true for benzene. That's a formula for benzene, by the way, C686. Um, and so on and so forth. So one mole of atoms contains 6.022 Avogadro's number times 10 to the 23 atoms present in one mole. Same is true for one mole of molecules, contains Avogadro's number of molecules, and one mole of ions contain Avogadro's number of ions. All right? Okay, so remember, let me reiterate this particular point again. The molar mass of an element is the atomic mass expressed in grams per mole. All right? Um, and this contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms, which is Avogadro's number of the element. So that is true for every single element, as you can see in these examples here, right? Now, the atomic mass for hydrogen, for example, for one hydrogen atom is 1.008 AMU, and therefore the molar mass is 1.008 grams per mole. So you see here that Numerically, they're the same, but the units are different. And the same is true for magnesium. The same is true for sodium. And what they all have in common is that for the mass that represents a mole, or the molar mass, the number of atoms present, in each case, is Avogadro's number. All right? So we can use what we have just learned now to solve certain problems. So I think I have about two or three examples lined up here. So let's look at this first one. This first one says... How many iron atoms are present or contained in 25 grams of iron? So, what you'd have to do is start off with what we're given. In fact, let me go to this pen mode here. Oops. Okay, so we start off. What I like to do is write down what is given and what is required. So, what is given is 25 grams. 0 0.0 grams of Fe and the question is how many Fe atoms are present in this mass all right okay so we start off with 25 well firstly let me say this so to solve this problem I would start with the grams of iron and I would figure out how to get from grams of iron to moles of of iron moles of iron and then I'll try to figure out how to get from moles of iron to the number of iron atoms now based on what we have learned so far we should be able to go from grams of iron to moles because the molar mass is what is used to determine that relationship and we can get from moles of iron to number of iron atoms because this is where Avogadro's Avogadro's number will come into play because remember Avogadro's number represent the number of atoms present per mole so what I would do next is I would start off with what is given the 25.0 grams of iron and I would focus on converting that to moles of iron. So basically, if you remember, we said that the molar mass is the same thing as the atomic mass. And to get the atomic mass, I would consult the periodic table. And according to the periodic table, the atomic mass is for iron 55.85 grams. So the way I would represent that in this conversion factor is that I would put one mole of Fe above and the mass in grams down here, which I said was 
five grams of iron. Now, of course, the reason why I set it up this way is because I want the grams of iron here and here to cancel out. So the only unit remaining after that process would be the moles of iron. So that, that corresponds to completing this first step here, right? Going from grams of iron to moles of iron, all right? The next step is where to go from where we would go from moles of iron to the number of iron atoms, and that is where Avogadro's number comes into play. Remember, we said that Avogadro's number represents the number of atoms, in this case, iron atoms, present in one mole of iron. So the way I would set it up in this conversion factor, I would put one mole of Fe down here, and Avogadro's number, 6.02. Um, times 10 to the 23. I typically round off Avogadro's number to three sig figs, so that's why I use 6.02 times 10 to the 23 Fe atoms. All right, and then I'll use my calculator to work this out. So 25 times 55.85, no, I'm sorry, 25 divided by 55.85 And then multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And according to my calculation, this works out to be equal to 2.69. 2.69 times 10 to the 23 iron atoms. All right. So that's basically how you would solve this problem. All right. So this one is a relatively simple examples. As you can imagine, things can become a bit more complicated depending on the question that is being asked. All right, so that's the first example. The next example is basically the reverse, because in this case, they gave you, let me write it down here, they gave you 3.01 times 10 to the 23 Na atoms and you're to find the equivalent mass in grams of sodium, all right? So the way I would tackle this problem is that I would go from the number of sodium atoms, whoops, sodium atoms, to moles of sodium. And for this, you're going to need Avogadro's number, Avogadro's number, and then to go from moles of sodium to grams of sodium, you're going to need to use the molar mass, which you can get from the periodic table. So start off with the 3.01 times 10 to the 23 Na atoms. I would convert that to moles using Avogadro's number. So I put one mole above of sodium. And down here, Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 Na atoms. And then the next conversion factor is where I would put one mole of sodium down here. And the molar mass of sodium, which I would look up in the periodic table, and I see that the molar mass of sodium is 22.99 grams of sodium. And that's basically it. So, again, I would take out my calculator. 3.01 times 10 to the 23 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 times 22.99. And according to my calculation, this works out to be equal to 11.5 grams of sodium. And that's how you do that. All right. Okay. So that's another example of utilizing molar mass and um, Avogadro's number to determine the relationship between a certain number of atoms to the mass of the elements. Okay, so here's another one. I think this one is actually 
easier than the first two that we looked at. It says, what is the mass of 0.365 moles of tin? Well, um, in this case, it's easier because there's a direct relationship between the moles of tin. So let me write this down here. 0 0.365 moles of tin. Formula of tin is SN. All right, and you're asked for the mass in grams of the same. Now, as I was saying, there's a direct, it should be N, lowercase n. As I said, there should be a direct, or there is a direct relationship between the grams and mole of tin, and that's molar mass. So this basically requires only one conversion factor, 0.365 moles of Sn. We multiply that by one mole below here as the denominator and up here we have the numerator which for 10 is okay where is 10 in the periodic table 10 is 118.71 write it here 118.71 grams of 10 so let me do my calculation 0.365 divided by or actually multiply by 118 0.71 and according to my calculations this works out to be equal to 43.3 grams of tin okay so that's how we do that one so that one is simpler than the previous two all right okay um, here is another one now this one you have to be careful about right you have to look at how this question is worded the question says, how many oxygen atoms are present in 2.0 moles of oxygen molecules? All right. So note what the question is asking for. The question is asked for, asking for the number of oxygen atoms, and the question gave you the number of moles of oxygen molecules. So let me start off by writing here. 2.00 mole of oxygen molecules. Now remember, oxygen in nature exists as a diatomic molecule, so the formula is O2, all right? And the question is asking for how many oxygen atoms are present, all right? So the way I would do this is I would start off with 2.00 moles of O2, and I would go from moles of O2 to moles of O atoms, all right? And then from there to here, I would go from moles of oxygen atoms to the number of oxygen atoms, all right? So to go from moles of oxygen atoms to number of oxygen atoms, of course, Avogadro's number Avogadro's number, sorry, would be required. But to get from moles of oxygen molecules to moles of oxygen atoms, you would use the prefix here, right? Because this tells you that for every mole of oxygen molecules present, there are two moles of oxygen atoms, right? So the way I would set this up is I would start off with 2.00 moles of O2 and then I would multiply this by 1 mole of O2 and 2 moles of O atoms. All right? Because that comes directly from the fact that you have a subscript right here. For every mole of oxygen that is present, there are 2 moles of oxygen atoms. And then Avogadro's number will come into play where I'll put 1 mole of oxygen atoms and here I would put Avogadro's number which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 O atoms and I would work that out so 2 times 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 and according to my calculation, this works out to be equal to, round off to three six figs, works out to be 2.41 times 10 to the 23, 10 to the 24 
atoms O atoms and that's how you do that all right um, okay so that's basically it for this video so the next video in this chapter we'll be talking talking about the molar mass of compounds until next time